Hi, it's Haley with Silver Moon Branding and Design, and today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to create a box in Adobe Dimension using Adobe Illustrator from a flat die line PDF or Illustrator file. So let's get started. So first you can see that I have my die line open here. I've got it all designed with all of the panels and we're going to turn these into OBJ files and then import them into dimensions. Um, so first we're going to measure the different sides. So we're going to take this rectangle here. It doesn't matter what color you're using. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it over here and I'm also going to rotate it. And instead of doing revolve, this time we're going to choose extrude. And this time it's going to give us a depth that we can choose. So the depth is going to be this angle here. You can see that the measurement shows up there and the width is 6.25. And come back here and in this depth column, we'll put 6.25. Boom. So that's a pretty easy way to make a box. And we'll add the flaps over top and kind of simulate the flaps. Um, dimensions doesn't have to be exact like a 3D CAD model. You can kind of play with the illusion of lighting and texture. So for this, um, that's going to be the base of our box. Now these flaps on the side are the tricky part, right? Because they kind of overlap and um, I had to make a little paper model. Right, so I always think it's important to print out your die lines and use X-Acto knife and get arts and craftsy with it just so you can see how these panels overlap. Um, it's important when you're designing, but it's also helpful when you're making a 3D design because you want to make sure you're replicating it as close to life as possible. Um, so this side is very interesting. Um, you can see I was afraid to put any graphics on it before I printed it out because I wasn't quite sure how everything overlapped. Um, so you can see here, we've got this shape and these panels that kind of tuck in somehow or tape down. Um, the other side is completely flat, so that's easy. But this side, we're gonna have a little bit of a hard time figuring out how to make that happen. But we're just gonna go for it because we gotta make it look convincing, right? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these shapes here. I'm gonna hide that menu for a minute. And we're going to trace these panels. Um, so just kind of go over top of it here. And again, doesn't have to be perfect, but we'll try to get it as close as possible to how it'll look in real life. And if you already have the shape as a die line, then you can just copy it. But since mine, they're not connected shapes. Um, I got a comment on my last video asking why if you have different paths, it's creating like five different objects instead of just one. So it is important that the shape is connected because um, if you slice and dice it, so I'll just do a quick example here. So for this knife tool, if you just created two objects, so like that's a separate one, um, and you highlight them both and come over here to revolve, it will treat them as two different shapes. No matter how you slice it, um, they're just gonna be different. So if we back it up and we make sure that we don't have that sliced, and now we hit this extrude button, now it's one shape. So you can either hit Command J to join those shapes or use, use, use the Pathfinder tools over here to combine shapes, but you'll wanna make sure that your shape is one path together. Um, and that's how this tool works. So you can see that um, from this angle, this panel is pretty thick. And since we want this to be more like a cardboard, um, I'm gonna try going down to point two. See, that's still too thick. So what about 0.1? That might be okay. Let me try 0.06 just for fun. And um, you can use these tools down here if you wanted to get a better look. I still think that might be a little too thick. So I'm gonna go to 0.04. And I think I'm happy with that. Um, you can also adjust this within dimensions. So it's not a huge deal if you don't get it right right away, but um, why not aim for perfection on the first round? So, um, all right, so that's that panel. I'm gonna drag it over here 
that's the top panel. And just because I've already created this box, I know that this bottom panel is also the same dimensions, just flipped on a 180 degrees. So I'm not going to redo it, but if this was a different shape down here, then you would have to recreate it. But um, you can see that they're the same. And then I also think I might can get away with having just one wall and overlapping these shapes to give the illusion. But for the practice of this exercise, let me go ahead and create this one as well. So I'm um, tracing this shape just to get it as close to reality as possible. All right, since that's traced, we'll drag it over here and we'll do the same thing, click extrude. And since I knew 0.04, I think was what we wanted before. All right, cool. So I'm gonna highlight all of these. I'm going to go to file, export selection. And oops, see, I selected all three, so it's combining them together. So what I actually wanna do is clear that and then select these one at a time and go to export selection. So this one we can call box base and then make sure from this drop down menu you click OBJ and I'm gonna click cancel and I'm gonna go back to select each of these three just so that I only export one time. So then we'll do box flap one for this one and then um, hit cancel again and then this one will be box flap two and then I will check these boxes make sure that they are all obj files and I will export those so here we go let me make sure I have the right file okay and now they're exported 